welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Emma. I'm a maker, predominantly a knitter, and I also own um, Eldenwood Craft, where I make and sell handmade project bags and accessories for other makers. You can find my website at eldenwoodcraft.com. I'll pop a link in down below to, uh, to my website and all the other places that you can find me online. Um, and there will be some brief show notes down below and some more detailed ones over on my website. So you are very welcome to go and have a read of those. Uh, recording today um, towards the end of July, I forget the date, but it's a Wednesday, um, from my home here in Somerset. Um, so let's get on with the episode. Today it's a pretty standard um, episode. I'm going to be showing you some finished objects, a couple of finished objects, what's on my needles and um, what I'm going to be making next. Um, I've also got a couple of books to talk to you about and I will share with you some of the things coming in my next shop update. Before we do any of that, I am going to draw the next winner in the Eldenwood Craft Make 9 Make Along for 2022. Thank you to everyone who posted their finished objects in the Ravelry thread and on Instagram. And the winner who I drew yesterday by random number generator was post 50. Uh, the post was a pair of sock blank socks and the winner is Katie Knit Katie. That's your username on Ravelry. I am assuming with that username your name is Katie um, and I seem to remember you're in the UK. So Katie, if you would like to get in touch with me via Ravelry, via Instagram direct message, via email, email address is down below. Um, then we can discuss your prize but you have the option of either a pattern from Ravelry or Etsy or, or wherever up to the value of £10 or a bag from my shop or um, I can make you a bag because there's very little in my shop at the moment but we can, we can talk about that online. Um, yeah, so congratulations. Um, there are a lot of finished objects this time, somewhere in the region of about 40, I think. Um, so that was great, some really lovely ones. Um, and Katie, prize winner Katie, I was very impressed. Your post just before your sock blanks, sock blank socks, was an amazing Harry Potter dressing gown. So um, go and have a look at that if you haven't seen it. Right, keep posting for quarter three and I will draw the next prize in October, when I record in October. Right, let's get on to some knitting. Um, so I've got some knitting and I've also got a bit of crochet to share with you today actually, but that's in the works in progress. So my finished objects, I have two. They are both, uh, where are they? Oh yeah. They're both socks. Uh, I've not got a huge amount to show you today actually for one very good reason that I will show you in a minute. But the first pair of socks I have got to show you that I finished, I'm really pleased with. Let's find a sock blocker. Just pop these on. must get some photos of these actually for Ravelry and for Instagram and for my show notes. Right. Oh, these are lovely. Here they are. These are, um, you could call them scrappy socks. I'm not going to call them scrappy socks because they um, were made from a really beautiful um, mini set bundle from Blue Fern Yarns. Just share that with you. This was um, Shannon who runs Blue Fern Yarns. This was her January palette pack. So I used all five, oops, put that there. I used all five uh, mini skeins to make these. The gray was used, dark gray was used for the socks I always get this wrong. Cuff, heel, toe. <laughs> is that cuff? It is cuff, isn't it? 
So cuffs, heels and toes were the dark grey and then um, I did, um, I used the other five, the other four mini skeins for the rest of the sock and I worked out that I needed roughly eight rows per colour, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, eight rows per colour um, to get me down to the start of the toe and that worked out quite nicely. Aren't they lovely? I love Shannon's um, monthly palette packs, they are put together really nicely. So I knit um, probably about eight rounds for the, the cuff as well, heel flap and gusset, I did a square, um, square heel turn, I've seen someone doing that on Instagram, on YouTube fairly recently and I thought it looked quite neat. Um, yeah, and then just the gusset decreases and a standard, just a standard wedge toe. So I'm really pleased with these socks. I like them very much. I have not worn them, well, it's summer and I don't really wear socks in summer, but I hadn't worn them anyway because I wanted to show them to you nice and neatly. I didn't really block them particularly. I washed them in um, wool wash, but then I just popped them um, pop them out to dry not on blockers. I do find when I put my socks on blockers the, to dry after I finish knitting them the cuff goes a bit flary so I've opted not to block them on blockers anymore unless they're lace socks in which case I will block them because you need to do that really to get the lace to stand out. My next pair of socks that I knit though I've um, discovered a new one by one ribbing technique um, very very recently um, that makes the ribbing a little bit neater and a little bit more cinched in so I'm going to try that and if it comes out nicely I'll share that with you next time I um, record a podcast assuming I have used that technique. So yeah so nice shorty socks with yarn from Blue Fern Yarns. Knit them using DPNs which is what I am using to knit most of my socks at the moment. Uh, and I use 2.25 millimetre needles as well. Um, just out of interest, this is what I have left from those uh, from those socks. Quite a lot, actually. I haven't weighed this. Oops. But, how's this going to come out? That's everything I've got left, which is a significant amount, really. I'd say that's probably around about 50 grams. So I could, if I wanted to, get another pair of socks out of those lovely colours. And there is Shannon's label. I've spoken quite a lot about Shannon in recent episodes because we've worked together um, on a collaboration uh, a couple of months ago or so. So yeah, that's my Blue Fern Yarn socks. My other finished object is another pair of socks. I will just pop one of them on a blocker. Beautiful yarn again lovely colours in this one and here they are. You will, if you've been here before, you will recognise these socks. I knit these a lot. They are the Rose City Rollers by Mara Catherine Briner. Briner or Brimer? Not sure but the, the full details will be in the show notes. The yarn is from Sherry Iris. I have got the ball band here. Uh, here we go, it's the one on top, that's fortuitous. There's the ball band. It was a um, a special skein of yarn for a um, charity collaboration that Sherry did with um, Treasure Te Chest maybe two years ago, I'm not quite sure, um, and it's a colourway called A Garden Posy. It's in Sherry's Sturdy Sock 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. Um, I absolutely love the colours. It has pulled, uh, and I'm not mad keen on pooling, but that's just a personal choice. But I really, really like the colours in this, so I'm very happy to wear these. Um, I am wondering if this colour pulled, because I knit them on different size needles to um, the needles I normally use. 
I chose, for some reason, and I'm not sure why, I chose to knit these on nine inch circulars, which as I said a few minutes ago, I don't, I normally knit on DPNs. I think I probably just wanted to try something a little bit different. I, I used to knit all my socks on nine inch short circulars and I was sorting out my needles not so long ago and found my um, my needles at the bottom of a drawer. So I just, I just, I must have just had a an urge to try them. Um, I won't be going back to them anytime soon. I didn't particularly enjoy the um, the experience again, which is probably why I stopped using them before. I use the Addies, which have got one longer needle and one shorter needle, and I don't don't have a problem with holding the needles and getting on with it. I just I I prefer to work with with I just prefer to work with double points. Um, we are all different, aren't we? And one of the joys of knitting is that there are all these different things that we can try, different tools, um, and you don't have to stick with the same ones every time. However, I, the, the Addy double, uh, the Addy short circulars don't come in a 2.25 millimetre size. No idea why. They never have, as far as I know. Um, so I had to knit these on 2.5 millimetre needles and um, never had a sock pull before and I just wonder if that might be the reason or it might just be the, the way it's been dyed but um, uh, you're either a fan of pooling or you're not um, and I can absolutely live with these. I love this, this um, the, the bluey greeny section, I think that is just a, an absolutely gorgeous colour. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the fabric that the um, the 2.5 millimetre needles make. It's a little bit too... I don't know what it is. I don't know. So they're, they're not my most favourite socks in the world, but I really like the yarn and I love a Rose City roller, so they will definitely be worn. Um, the Rose City roller, is it a free pattern or a paid for pattern? I can't remember, so I won't go into too much detail about this, but you, you basically cast on, you don't do any ribbing, you just go straight into knitting round and round, heel flap and gusset, and I did not do the, the square heel this time, I just did a standard, standard heel turn. Um, and I did something a bit funny with the toes as well, maybe that's... Maybe these socks were just not meant to be. I I I don't like that heel. Uh, I don't like that toe finish at all. I think I tried to do a, a more rounded toe, um, but not where you decrease every seven or eight stitches or whatever. I just did the standard decreases at the edge, and it just looks a little bit funny. Anyway, there we go. Second pair of socks finished. Beautiful yarn not so happy with the socks okay what else do i have to say oh yeah so just going back to these i knit 60 stitch i knit a 60 stitch sock which is what i normally knit and i do wonder if i'd knit oh let me go back a step further so yeah, I knit a 60 stitch sock, which is what I normally knit. These are 60 stitches and these fit beautifully. These are a little baggy. And that's obviously because the needle size is a little bit bigger. They would probably have fit a little bit better had I gone down to 56 stitches. And that probably would have made the pooling a little less prominent as well. So that's maybe something to think about. I've got quite a lot of this yarn left as well. So I could give it another go, but I'm not madly keen on knitting with those short circulars again, so I probably won't. Anyway, I'm totally rambling now, so forget that. Um, let's move on to what I am currently working on. I've got one, two, three things to um, share with you today. I have got three other works in progress that I haven't touched since last recording. They are my, um, the flax sweater that I'm knitting for my husband, my bits and bobs blanket, which I think is just off camera up there, and my jelly roll blanket, which I haven't mentioned in a long time, and my gut feeling is I'm probably not going to finish that. Not because I don't like it, 
but I, as, as you know, if you've been here before, I am absolutely loving my Bits and Bobs blanket, so I think my blanket focus is going to be on that one. Anyway, let's crack on with what I'm currently working on. I'm going to show you uh, something a bit different for me, and that's some crochet. Now, the reason I'm making this is because I've got quite a big head um, and I can never find a summer hat to fit me other than a sort of a baseball cap thing um, and baseball caps keep that part of your face in the shade but not the rest of not the rest of you and I really wanted um, a really pretty summer hat maybe a straw hat and I just for years I've never ever ever been able to find one that fits me so I've always gone hatless in the summer um, and then I was thinking why don't I just make myself one and so I went on the hunt for a pattern I found two I printed off one of them um, to show you just find the picture bear with me here we go it's called it's called the halcyon bucket hat from the make and do crew i think that might be something to do with lion brand yarns i'm not sure but yeah so that there we go the um the halcyon bucket hat so oh I can, knit, I can crochet a granny square, I'm okay doing that and the rest of it looks just like round and round crochet so I'm not the best crocheter in the world, I can't read my crochet very well but I think I could do that. So I collected myself, or I bought myself some yarn from Wool Warehouse and these are the yarns that I bought, bought three colours, oops, that one for the sort of the main body of the hat and these two this is a bit messy apologies these two for the um the granny squares that's them all together so that was the yarn i bought the the brand the yarn that, that it is is um here it's cotton yarn there we go and it's um Calista by and i looked up how to say this it's a dutch brand i think it's dutch um so i will sort of anglicize it a little bit so it's shepjes Calista, um and it's an aran weight i think for 50 grams you get 85 meters and it's 100 percent double gassed cotton whatever that means so that was all good um i had to buy a crochet hook because the pattern recommended a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook i think so i bought one of those and i got cracking followed it um followed the pattern um as stated and i got to you you knit you knit you crochet the top of the hat first then you make a band of granny squares and then um you join all the granny squares together and you knit the brim and then you join the hat to that you join the top of the hat to the granny squares and when i'd finished crocheting the granny squares it was massive it was huge it was the, the granny squares were slipping down over my head so i pulled it all out and went down a crochet hook size to five millimeters same problem so in the end i used a four and a half millimeter crochet hook i think this is one of the clover and more crochet hooks and here is the progress that I have made it's almost finished I have just got all the ends to weave in and the top to attach to the to the hat I'm really proud of myself for having made this because as I said crochet isn't my forte the only thing I have ever crocheted before is um, a blanket really so that that's kind of what it'll look like when it's finished this has sat um i got it attached with um 
stitch markers, uh, the hat to the main body. Um, didn't have quite enough yarn to, to make the brim as long as the pattern said, but that's okay. I'm tempted to put it on, but I'm not going to until it's finished to show you. So you'll see it finished in the next episode. Um, but yeah, I really like it. It's, you know, it's just for sitting out in the garden or when I'm out, we, we've been to the beach a couple of times over the summer and um, being cotton, it should keep my head reasonably cool. I love the, um, I love the way the colours have worked together for the granny squares. Yeah, so that's, um, I'm really pleased with that. It's a paid for pattern, it's on Ravelry, um, there'll be a link to it below. Um, loads and loads of ends to weave in still. I'll show you the inside, it's a bit of a sight. <laughs> but yeah, so all being well, I, I have tried it on, it's slightly too big for me, but not too big to make it look like it's um, way too big. So yeah, so that will be a finished object next time and I will share that with you when it's done. Um, so that's my crochet hat. I have a pair of socks on the go. Just the one pair of socks on the go. Because um, you've always got to have a pair of socks on the go, haven't you? This is in a right old mess because I have just... It kind of get, sits out in my knitting corner and doesn't ever get put in a bag. But I put it in a bag to bring it upstairs and now it's got all tangled. Oh, and some stitches have come off my needle. I need to use a DPN cosy and I have got one in my bag, but I didn't use it. Anyway, let's get all this neatened up. Talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. Okay, uh, I've obviously been talking for um, 25 minutes or so, the camera cut out. So I was about to show you the ball band for the little grey girl. There we go, Gemma. And this, yeah, this is in her Misa colourway high twist sock. I do like a high twist, um, a high twist yarn. And it's 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. And I bought a 50 gram and 20 gram um, self-striping set of yarn because um, that's all I needed for a pair of socks. Um, oh it's getting twisted again. So you can see the lovely the lovely colours in the self-striping and the yellow that I've popped in for the heel was the um, the 20 gram mini that came with the set. So a really really lovely colourway. Really pleased with that. I am knitting these concurrently, which is how I tend to do my socks. So I will um, wind a ball, whether that be a 50 gram ball or a, a skein or a 100 gram skein in, in half um, and knit both at the same time or you know, concurrently. And the way I tend to do that with these, for example, I cast on one, knit, knit um, down to where the heel starts and then did the same on that one and then knit the heel flap and gusset, did the same on the second, did the um, gusset decreases, did the same on the second, and now I'm working down the foot. So I'll do a couple of inches on one and so on um, until I get down to the toe and then I'll do one toe and the other. And that, for me, that really makes um, a pair of socks go, um, seems to go quite quickly and I enjoy knitting them that way. You certainly don't get any second sock syndrome um, and you get a pair of socks finished at the same time, which I really like. So that is my sock project at the moment. And then the other thing that I've been knitting on, and this is why I haven't had a huge amount of, why I don't have a huge amount of other things to show you this month. Um, it's my Lanes Wrap by Julie Hoover. I talked about this in my last episode. I'd knit about that much, roughly. Um, and this is the wrap that I am making for a wedding that I'm going to in the autumn overseas. Um, I needed something just to pop over my shoulders if it gets a bit cooler in the evenings. And I had 
um, been to the John Arban Mill open weekend and purchased um, some of this beautiful alpaca supreme yarn um, in the colour Azurite. It's not focusing. Doesn't want to focus, but it's a beautiful um, mix of super fine alpaca. Falklands Merino and Mulberry Silk. It's a lace weight yarn, 600 metres to 100 grams. Yeah, so these are 50 gram skeins, so you get 300 metres. And I am coming up to the end of my second skein. That's what I've got left. So I've knit nearly 100 grams and I've made some significant progress. Right, I will show, I don't, this isn't going to be easy to show, but let me, there we go. So, that much has been knit, which for lace weight is a, a lot of knitting. I am over halfway now, there, there are um, 600, well, the, the pattern says to knit for 602 rows, I think it is, 600 rows. I'm well over 300 now. Um, there's my, you won't be able to see it because it's a very dark stitch marker, but my, my 300 row stitch marker is here. So I'm, what, 40, 30, 40 rows beyond that. Um, it's a two row repeat. It could be a really dull knit, <laughs> but I think the amount of progress that I've made will tell you that I am not finding it dull. I'm finding it really lovely, relaxing knitting. I absolutely love the fabric that's being created. I really enjoy knitting with lace weight yarn. I really enjoy knitting with this lace weight yarn in particular. It's got a really nice halo because of the alpaca. It's got a softness um, that, um, it's just beautiful, it's beautiful to handle. It gets a little bit sticky in your hands on a, on a very hot day. And as if you're in the UK, um, you will know that we've had a few of those, um, even down here in Somerset. Um, so I haven't knit on it every single day, but I have knit on it significantly. It is the, the project that I um, opt to pick up more so than any others principally probably because I have got a deadline so I want to get this finished for the beginning of October so I've got time to block it properly um, but at this rate I will have finished it by the end of the summer but probably by the end of August. I, When I recorded last time I had worked out that I needed to knit about 37 rows a week to have it finished by the end of October and I'm well ahead of that now I um yeah I reckon I'll have it finished by the end of August uh, and then I'll have plenty of time to block it um I think knitting this definitely tells me that I am a product knitter rather than a process knitter I was thinking about that the other day as I was working on this if I was a process knitter I wouldn't enjoy knitting this I don't think because of the the very very repetitive nature of the of the the item but um, it works for me and um, yeah if I if I was a product knitter I would probably um, if I was a process knitter I would be going for something that was maybe a little bit more intricate or had you know had had a bit more variety in the stitches but yeah it's just a lovely a lovely lovely item I will either wear it around my shoulders to traditional wrap style or I will um, sort of wear it as a more as a scarf pulled through <laughs> can't show that very well at the moment but I will decide that when I'm there maybe I won't even need it but um, as my friend said when we were looking at the yarn together um, this will be very wearable um, once its intended use has passed the other thing just to say the pattern um, the, the pattern says that the um, the wrong side, this is the wrong side, you can see the ridges here, um, which is, the, this is the pearl side, 
she said that's actually that's the that's uh, intended to be the correct side the right side for this garment um i don't know whether i will wear it as the right side or the wrong side i don't know that's there's the right side you still get the effect i get what she's saying because the um these ridges here are rather lovely but anyway we'll see jumping ahead of myself there so yeah that's the lanes wrap by julie hoover really enjoying it and it may well be finished by the time i record again or if it's not it'll be really close to finishing oh um the other thing just to say as well as the as well as the beautiful fabric it's got a really nice edging it's got an eye, eye cord edging built-in eye cord edging all the way up be difficult to show um yeah thoroughly pleased with that this yarn I said in my last podcast that I'm not a massive keen, not a massive fan of um, mohair and um, the, what's the other one? Surrey silk, alpaca, I can't remember the right name. I just don't like the, the shedding nature of it. This is a really good compromise um, and I can definitely see myself making um and other large wraps in um this fabric in this yarn it's beautiful comes in a nice bunch of color choices as well okay so that's everything that i've been knitting on what i've got to show you now are a couple of things that i'm going to work on next okay first one um I mentioned this a couple of podcasts ago I think um, I wanted it was potential future knitting excuse me and my lovely friend Caroline gifted me the pattern Caroline thank you very much um, and I have bought the yarn to go with it so um, once my lanes wrap is finished this is going to be my next cast on although I will have my flax sweater on the go as well but one for Dennis and one for me <laughs> um, so this is the you may sweater I looked up how to say this you may it's a Japanese word that means I think it means dreams it's a pattern by Isabel Kramer the, the pattern photo there shows that you can have it either long sleeved or short sleeved I don't think it's meant to be knit with one of both one of each um, and it's just a really lovely lovely jumper I've wanted to knit an Isabel Kramer pattern for the longest time so Caroline thank you ever so much for giving me the opportunity to do that um, as I said I bought the yarn and it will be no surprise to you to learn if you've been here before that I have bought myself some drops Nord it is my one of my absolute favorite yarns it's nice and cheap it um, comes in a lovely range of colours and like the like the like the John Arben um, alpaca it's got a lovely halo beautifully soft wears well I've got a couple of jumpers in it and I absolutely love it so I'm going to be knitting it all in this um, grey colour it's um, colour 04 I think that's mid grey is it the same you know, I was going to say it's the same one that I'm knitting my bits and bobs blanket out. Hey, I could deck myself out in a blanket and sweater and get completely camouflaged, but no, it's not. This is what I'm knitting my bits and bobs blanket out of, and that's going to be my you may. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so that that will be that will be my next cast on. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to having that jumper ready for. Um, late autumn it's got beautiful i don't know if you can see that but it's got a lovely lace some lace work there and the rest of it is very straightforward um stocking stitch knitting lovely so you will see that in a future episode and then the other um pattern that i have um just recently purchased um to knit a pair of socks that is not a pair of rose city rollers um, but a sock with an actual pattern on it. I don't knit those very often. This was a new release by Tracy Miller, who's one of the grocery girls. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and it's her slip slip stripe shorties so another pair of shorty socks but i like shorty socks um it's got another roll top but it's got a little bit of ribbing and then it's got some lovely color work so i'm looking forward to to getting on with those i don't know what yarn i'll use yet um but they will be the next pair of socks on my needles okay that is it for the knitting content shall i show you what i've been reading last time i recorded i had started american dirt i finished american dirt with <laughs> i read it when it was very hot outside when we had our lovely weather um and it's <laughs> It's got that um, beachy feel to it now. It's got sun cream on it. And <laughs> um, Anyway, so yeah, American Dirt by Janine Cummins. I really enjoyed it. It kept me hooked all the way through. There were moments where my heart was in my mouth. Um, I was a little bit worried for the main character at times, the main characters at times. Cracking story. Really interesting. Not like a book not a story not like a story i'd read before um i thought it slowed down a little bit at the end um but to be honest it couldn't really keep up the fast pace all the way through and um, so i can forgive it for that um but yeah really good really enjoy it i would recommend that it's a little bit um someone described it as being brutal it is a little bit brutal at times um and they talk there's there is a lot of the book is set around sort of jumping on trains and things like that and it's just it's really good really enjoyed it so i finished that and then i picked up a classic jamaica in by daphne du maurier and um i'm on page 184 or 185 do you like my bookmark it's cute isn't it this is from um, someone whose YouTube channel I follow actually, Fizz and Flourish. She's an illustrator um, and it's like studio vlogs. I really enjoy watching watching those. Um, yeah, anyway, the book, Jamaica Inn. Um, I'm guessing most of you have probably heard of this, if not read it. Um, it's a book that was written in the 1930s, first published 1936. Um, and it's about um, Mary who goes to stay with her relatives in Jamaica Inn which is in the depths of the Cornish um, moors and um, her uncle, Uncle Joss, yeah, is um, a bit of a scoundrel um, and it's just, it's a really good old-fashioned adventure story i was thinking it was getting a little bit slow and then poof, it's just got really exciting <laughs> um so i'm really enjoying this it's a, it's a really good uh interesting read uh it's just you know it's a good old-fashioned tale so um yeah i will hopefully get this finished in the next week or so and then i am going to be reading let me just go and get the book I'm going to start next. So yeah, this um, I'm going to be reading Kate Atkinson behind the scenes at the museum. Never read any Kate Atkinson before. Um, reported to be reported to be a really good author. Um, so yeah, looking forward to this. Um, I will report back next time. Okay, one more thing to talk about and that is my next shop update um or how the summer's going to go with the shop updates um at the moment there is very little in the shop but i will be having an update um in the next week or so i will be um sending out a newsletter to my newsletter subscribers with all the details they will be getting first early access um and then the shop update will go live to everyone else so if you want to be in on the um, the early early access 
point and then sign up to my newsletter there's a link down below i think or on my website at the moment so i'm my this this web this update is going to be ready to ship only usually my shop updates are pre-orders um but i've now got a bit of time over the summer um to make some ready to ship and i'd like to have more ready to ship in my shop on an ongoing basis so i'm thinking about changing the way i do my shop updates um maybe to once a month um, again with early access to newsletter subscribers um, and then working on um, new stuff for the shop for the next update so there, there should be a lot of bags in each shop update going forwards but for August they will be small updates um, and for this update so far this is what I've um, work, been working on so I've got two fabrics um, ready to go there are any small amounts small numbers of these bags because i only had a meter each of these fabrics but i've got this um lovely navy blue all Achilles print in a range of sizes they still need the drawstrings going in um but um i really like this print it's a personal favorite um and i've got some new colors for my linings i've got this beautiful gorgeous teal canvas for um for this um, this um, collection of bags so that's my midi size um, I really wish you could tell through the um, through the lens about the sort of the quality of the fabric I I usually use home decor weight fabric um, and this is home decor weight fabric it's sturdy but it's soft um, I interface it with a nice fleece lining um, what well, my larger size bags I do um, in fact, it's, this has two types of interfacing in it. My smaller everyday size bag, which is one of these, has just the one type of interface. But because it's, because it's home decor weight, it's sturdy anyway. Um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm really proud of the bags that I make. I think they are good quality and I take really good care to make sure um, that they they are the best quality that I can produce for you. So there's a selection of all the all Kiwi bags. The other size I've got is my extra large. In fact, I've got two other sizes. I've got my extra large, which comes with two handles. You can fit a huge amount in there. And to go with all of those, I've got um, some notions pouches. So that's the all Kiwi fabric and then um i've got some beautiful sort of late this reminds me of late summer meadows um I showed this on instagram this week and it's gone down a treat so i will be getting some more of this fabric um there's lots of flowers and butterflies and birds on there uh, i absolutely love this faded summer meadow it could be called so yeah and then these have got a beautiful um sort of ochre canvas as a lining so i've got those in my midi um notions pouches another midi and the everyday size you can see the difference in the two bags i don't have an xl didn't have quite enough fabric for some reason so there's a few of those. I think these will be popular. Um, so if you're interested and miss out, um, apologies, but I have only got that many. Um, but I will definitely be making some more. And then I've got a bunch of other fabrics to sew up, start sewing up. Um, I've got a little bit of allotment fabric that I had in a collection a year or so ago. I'm going to make some more of these is that the right way around yet yeah, these woodland floor bags because these have been really popular um, so I'm going to make some more of those um, and then I've got some other bits and pieces there that I will work on through the summer so that is what is coming up in my shop over the next few weeks oh look I've got a woodland floor one here ready to go um, yeah, so if you're if you're keen for a project bag or want to see what's going in the shop early um, or just want some behind the scenes stuff 
um, some recommendations and a little bit of chit chat um, please do feel free to sign up to my newsletter you do get a nice little discount code as well for as a, as a welcome um, so it'd be good to have you have you on board um, signing up so if you do thank you it'd be really good to have you excuse me <coughs> right that is everything um i hope you are all doing well I haven't got a lot of personal news really daughter's home from university she's off camping at the moment with a boyfriend in devon um life is just ticking along as usual we're not having a proper summer break this year because we're going away in the autumn to the the wedding um so yeah summer really is just um mostly working for me for me um with a few days off um spending time with the family yeah that's really all i've got to say um why don't you leave me a comment um i love seeing your comments and i do try to reply to to them um as soon as i can i know i'm a little bit slow sometimes but i am up to date now i think um, but let me know where you're watching what you're working on um it would be good to good to have a chat with you in the comments um I will say it as I always do don't forget to like and subscribe because uh, camera stops again um, I was just wrapping up by saying don't forget to like and subscribe because the YouTube algorithm um, likes that and it will help bump my video up um, and show it to other people full show notes will be on my website um, brief links um, brief details of what I've shown you are down below and that I think is everything that I've got to say to you so have a good few weeks enjoy your making and I will catch up with you again in August all right take care lots of love bye